Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 160 of the official podcast, the Internet's longest running production. Today, Jackson has a thrilling tale yet again, just full of adventure over in Australia. What do you got for us today, Jackson? Well, over here, the fires are still burning, which makes sense because this webcam, I'm looking at the preview right now, it looks like my room is just full of smoke. I don't know <laughs> what it is about my webcam, but it's got this smoky filter over it. I've, I've gone through all the settings. I've uh, changed the room lighting and everything. Nothing helps. It just permanently looks smoky. It's not smoky in real life here, though, but it, I guess it I guess it could be and I'm just used to it. Anyway, that's that's the tales from Australia. Back to you, Charlie. <laughs> Is there any hope of beating the fire? <laughs> uh, we haven't discovered a technology capable of beating fire yet. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're still trying. It. Our top scientists are working on it. You should fight it you, with you fire. You want me to go out there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take a lighter to light the trees. Fires. Yeah, you can't burn this forest if I burn it. That sort of an attitude. Look, sometimes you gotta, you know, bitch slap Mother Nature, show her who's boss, who's wearing the pants in this relationship. If someone's gonna ruin the planet, it's us, not her. Fucking burning shit, burning animals. That's our job, and eating them. That's I can't believe it, it, the fire is still burning, and it's burnt over like eight times as much as the California wildfires. <laughs> but uh, no one seems to care about this one, at least internationally, even though it's burnt like eight times the land. If only you guys still had the Great Barrier Reef to call for assistance, you could start throwing coral at it, destroy it even faster. So... How is your ecology dealing with this? Because every time we talk about these things, it's like, you know, your barrier reef is gone. Now you're losing your forests. This is going extinct. That is going extinct. There's always this fear mongering. What does Australia well, there's even one look thing like? that won't go extinct. And that's the, 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 the giant rock in the center of Australia, Uluru. That'll never go extinct. What is it? Wait, you have a named <laughs> rock? What is it? Uluru? You don't know what Uluru is? No. Never heard of it. Why the fuck would we know Uluru? Yeah, I don't know your <laughs> sacred stone. It's a, it's a giant fucking rock out in the, like, it dead set in the middle of uh, Australia. It's, like, enormous, though. The Aboriginals worshipped it. Um, I don't know. It's just got cultural significance over here. Look why, it up. Uluru. Why won't that burn? Because it's a rock. Yeah, what the fuck, Charlie? So? D d rocks? Don't you know your Pokemon <laughs> matchups? <laughs> If the fire Rock burns hot enough, fire. Uluru could fall. You never know, yeah, man. But it's, yeah. it's all desert out there. Like, there's nothing to burn. Why Uluru? It's not even a very special rock. It's just... just is. What the fuck? What do you mean it's not a special rock? It's like the largest rock in the world. <laughs> awesome. All right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> what? Did, Look at it. I, Look how big it is in chat. Someone posted it. It's yeah, massive. Uh, biggest rock. No, isn't like Mount Everest the biggest rock? That's a mountain. Ooh, semantics. A I like it. Yeah. Also, Jackson, I highly doubt that at the time the Aboriginals knew it was the biggest rock in the world unless they had like access to the Guinness World Records or something. They just worship a rock. They didn't worship it. They just it had like cultural significance. I don't know. Hmm. I don't I don't feel knowledgeable enough to comment on how the Aboriginals <laughs> felt about it. Uluru. <laughs> <laughs> they could have hated it for all I know, actually. <laughs> they feared it, yeah. But well, anyway, that's a, that's today's Australian history lesson. It's sad to see Australia go up in flames, it really is. It's about time if you ask me. You know, this happens every bushfire season. We have like a dedicated four months of the year that was just spent being on fire most of the time. <laughs> Do you guys know what causes it? Uh... Fire. Well, we have yeah, we we have really dry seasons over here. So then anything just sparks sparks it like lightning, or people throw glass bottles out and the light refracts from it, creating bushfires. No. Or then there's just arsonists as well. There's a whole bunch of reasons. Bogans. Yeah. It's <laughs> hmm. fucking crazy. Well, the rest of the planet is in the winter. Yeah, that's a real fucking shame, man. It really is. Should we go back to Star Wars? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Is there anything left unsaid after we recorded yesterday's bonus episode? Mm -mm. Mm. No, we went over everything. Okay. Yeah. I can't think of anything we didn't cover. What else could we make a... fun of Jackson for? Hmm. 
Yeah, what's on the agenda today to make fun of Jackson? What else do you like, Jackson? (laughs) We're such Hmm. assholes. Let's go through... Okay, you've hit all the basics. (laughs) Let's go, let's have a little round robin here. Uh, Jackson, go in order and just make fun of something we all like. Ad-lib. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah, start with me, pussy, if you can. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, Jack not order. fair. I don't like. I don't. I don't have anything to make fun of you guys. <laughs> yeah, for. Jackson, start with yourself. Well, I don't, we, I don't feel. <laughs> you're just gonna make me bully myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're gonna make me do your work. <laughs> we gotta go in Jack order. No, so Jackson, we um, feign, you know, mockery most of the time. We also do not have very good reasons to make fun of you for, you know, your childish little hobbies. So exactly, try. Uh, I really can't it's not in my nature to (laughs) belittle people you're the worst you're that kid who gets bullied in school and you're like mom said turn the other cheek so I'll just keep getting bullied (laughs) yeah well, it just doesn't affect me. I, I I couldn't care less what you guys think about my Lego collecting <laughs> hobby or how I feel about Star Wars. Oh, did I you hear that, guys? He care. couldn't care less. What a nerd. I don't care. I'm Jackson. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. Fucking bitch. Top it up, Jackson. Right. Insult something I like. Uh, you're, sh- you're short. That's something. <laughs> what? Right, well, that, was a, that was a little one. <laughs> we've we've gone a little too far now. Uh, holy shit, Charlie, are you okay? That was really mean. Jeez, you man, you well, went for the job. We insult just... insult oh, something yeah. I like. <laughs> You're short. <laughs> <laughs> You're we short were insulting hobbies, not like physical features oh we can't Lord. change, Jackson. <laughs> wow, there are lines you don't cross. God, God, Jesus damn. Christ. Oh, that was mean. Wow. You know how you were uh, planning to maybe visit in the next couple weeks? Maybe you should think about canceling. That was, that was just fucked up. <sighs> Go on. We didn't tell you to stop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kaya, you're like loud, not loud, but you're like uh, abrasive with your opinions. These aren't you. hobbies. <laughs> what are you talking no, about? No, no, to be fair, that's Kaya's <laughs> hobby. <laughs> This is more like an employee review or something where I'm sitting in my boss's office like, well, you know, Kaya, sometimes you say things that you might not see as hurtful, but all the other employees, the women have been complaining. (laughs) It's that's not a roast. (laughs) Try. You don't have any you don't have any hobbies. What's your hobby? Alcoholism? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, there you go. That's that's better. Yeah, Yeah, that's better somewhere. I don't want to belittle you, belittle you for that, though, because you just remind me of my dad, and that's sad. No. Oh. It's just going to spend the, the... God, you're the worst the at this. <laughs> yeah, I don't it like sad. insulting people. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, yeah, but it's or not insulting. insulting people's hobbies. Why? Have some... It's playful banter. Until you called me short. Okay, let's teach you. Let's. <laughs> Which was the first thing he said. <laughs> yeah, do it to you, do it to each other. God damn it! Show show me how you do it. Then teach me. Okay, I'm Charlie. Young, I'm malleable. Do it to one of us, not not Jackson, and then Jackson learn from it yeah, and then apply. <laughs> yeah, you can take notes. Uh... Yeah, it's not so easy, you prick. That's <laughs> not true. I'm just. Kai's got great defense because his hobbies are so hard to remember. They're, they're so <laughs> cool. <laughs> what are your hobbies? Cock and ball torture? That's yeah. not fun to make fun of. <laughs> Dipping candle wax on your balls. It's weird, <laughs> weirdo. No, no. Shut up, shorty. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Going back to that, are we? It's all I can think of, like, glazing your donuts. I don't know, man. It's, it's the only one I can think of as a hobby. That's a weird way um, of putting it. Fuck, I don't know any of your hobbies, uh, like, anymore. I know you used to do a lot of, like, musical stuff, but, like, those are cool hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still do. Well, you're just complimenting like, you, you prick. <laughs> His are easy to yeah, compliment. Just, it's hard to look at Legos and be like, you know what? I like it. You're doing great. <laughs> you, <laughs> you turned this insult into him because of the insult against me. Yeah, I told you to it's insult me. You, you complimented you me and bitch yourself. slapped Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're the you're a little, you're lightning rod. You just absorb all the all mockery in the room. <laughs> you're, well, Andrew's got Magic the Gathering. That's lame. He hasn't uh, played that in a long time. Yeah, I haven't played that in like a year. 
Okay, okay, homo. Haven't played that. Wasn't there a Magic the Gathering poster in the back of your room last episode? My friend's room, yeah. He still plays. <laughs> yeah, sure. My friend. <laughs> he yeah. started insulting his friends. <laughs> yeah, insult yeah, my friends you've never met, Kaya. Do it. Yeah, you won't. take their hobbies down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so apparently Magic the Gathering. Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jackson. There, there I, is, I'll give you credit on that, though. There is no defending liking magic. It, it, Charlie, you, you cannot stick up for that. Charlie collects Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You're Collecting's not wrong, right? different, though. Yeah. You're not wrong, though. Yeah. But I collect Lego. You build wow, them. Nerd. That's nerdier. Loser. Yeah. No, but there's Dork. more involved in that. It's it's funner. You, it's more. It's there's more involved than collecting just cards. You not only built them. You like. You don't even freestyle with them. You just say what, do whatever it says on the paper. You don't, I don't know, experiment Dude, with them. Why would, I, why would I free? Why would I freestyle? That takes away the value of the creation. Because I can't come up with anything better than the Lego designers. And not with that intended. attitude. God, this is. I feel like you lack a lot of confidence. We're telling you to insult us. You go, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm just literally telling you to play with your Legos and you're going, I, I couldn't do it without instructions. <laughs> I don't know. I need, I need someone to tell me how to stick these two fucking pieces together that little children play with. <laughs> you know what you should get into, Jackson, as a legitimate suggestion is Kinex. Kinex had all that? like... Oh, yeah, Kinex was Xbox awesome. Connect? No. No, Connects is like a. It's different from Legos, oh, but yeah. kind of the same concept. And instead of it being bricks, it's like lines. It's like yeah. straight lines that connect to these cylinders. You can make some really cool shit fucking. with Connects. Yeah. Knex. Oh, yeah. th th those were the things where you'd build like uh, a. Knex? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, is you should build that, that shit. Connects look no, awesome. It's, it's Connects, but it, to him, he's saying the K, so he knows what we're talking oh, about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was an Australianism. Yeah, he's defining it. Okay. Yeah. You really or, should look into those, Jackson. Those are cool. No, that's too childish. <laughs> no. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why do you, so what, What's the difference between that and Lego? The only difference I can see is that I don't play with. I don't. Oh, Jesus. I don't collect Koenig, so it's. Somehow more cool than Lego now. Well, it's just, oh, there's so much more to do with Connects is way cooler than Legos. Have you seen Connects? Why? They're awesome. Have Why? you seen them? Yeah, like when you get to high level Connects, you can make like actual condom vending machines out of Connects. Yeah. Like there's a lot of stuff you can do with them. Instead of just like the like uh, model designs, you can make entire working things. Yeah. Full, as soon as full, I start like collecting this, you guys are gonna flip so hard. You guys are gonna be like, <laughs> Connects were always stupid and lame. Yeah. <laughs> then we start collecting Legos. <laughs> yeah. Or well, go back to collecting Lego, Jackson. At least that was cool. <laughs> uh, hey, man, we give you a shot. So you got you guys really have no you guys really have no hobbies that you guys are even slightly embarrassed about, or well, or? magic was the hobby, but I quit. No, well, well, that's not cool, Andrew. <laughs> well, no, I I didn't quit out of embarrassment. I quit because I got bored of it. Mm -hmm. Or to being made fun of. No, <laughs> man. Uh, after a <laughs> while, we just stopped being embarrassed of anything. What, even if I was knitting and I was really into that, why should I be ashamed of it? Yeah. There's no reason to I'm feel not, shame about anything, right? Really. Yeah, I'm not ashamed of any any of the things I collect or anything. That's Otherwise, I wouldn't have brought it up on the podcast or I wouldn't have told Charlie, knowing full well that he would have used it against <laughs> me immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome I'm to not the ashamed of it. I just think it's. I think it's a fun topic. I agree. I think when it comes to hobbies, you have to own it, or else it truly is embarrassing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the, there's no reason to really feel shame about any hobby. Well, I mean, depends, mm. really. If you're, you know, spying uh, well, on naked children, extreme, that's not a cool hobby. There are extreme examples, yes, but I meant general hobbies. Mm. What if you were collecting My Little Pony ponies? I think yeah. that's fine, too. No. <laughs> the well, line. you're a seven-year-old girl. Would you feel shame? Well, okay, but I'm not a seven-year-old girl. Kaya's not going to like my next hobby. That's fair. <laughs> you aren't a seven-year-old girl. Uh, do you collect beanie babies? What, what do you do? Oh, oh beanie, babies. beanie babies. I did that as a kid. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I remember that whole fucking craze. People went ape shit over Beanie Babies. Not because they even liked the Beanie Babies, but just because they thought it was like an investment. So yeah. in the future, the Beanie Babies would be worth millions, but they only ever depreciated. 
Yeah, those things were fucking nutso. Mm -hmm. You remember the Princess Diana bear? Nope. <laughs> God, like, they, they, Beanie Babies did such weird shit. They would have fucking VHS tapes, and it was like 30-minute specials on how to identify counterfeit be Beanie Babies. Someone's got to teach us. Oh, my God. Be was counterfeit Beanie Babies a big market? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Beanie Babies went nuts. Beanie Babies back in the day were the thing where when the stores opened, people would, like, black market f or Black Friday, like, storm and fight over each other just to get them. It, were, mm. it was nuts. Wow, it was, what, what is, what's special about Beanie Babies? They're they were cute. collectible. That was it. That was all they did. People will Each collect one had anything. a name tag that told you about it, and some of them were more rare than others, and some locations only had certain ones, and people wanted to collect them. Fuck, we gotta get into the collectible business. Such an easy scam. It re I was thinking about that myself, actually. Like, if we were going to have collectibles, what would we p what would we use? What would we do? Does it you know even I mean? matter? If we started our own line. Like, from what I can tell, every collectible is something that you would not otherwise even want to own if it were just one of it. The it only needs special to be displayable. Yeah, it needs to look mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I guess maybe. But even then, I mean, you it's... don't display your Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> I would if I could. Actually, I think they look cool as shit. You should put them in, like, a frame or a mount or something. I was thinking about it, but the mount would be pretty fucking large. It'd be an expensive mount. I wouldn't really want to spend that on it. Well, you spent the money to get the cards. You may as well spend the money mm. to make them look nice. Cards didn't cost nearly as much as the frame would. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, sounds, like, uh, sounds like you have shitty cards. <laughs> My yeah. card? Fuck you, Scrub. Kyle. I have the original <laughs> 1998, um, I think it was Bandai, Namco Bandai. Yu-Gi-Oh set, like the entirety of it, before they transferred over to Konami. My prototype cards. There's no way that that doesn't cost yeah. more than putting it into a frame. You told me it cost, like, it was expensive. <laughs> yeah, but the f you're underestimating Cut. how big the frame would have to be to hold all of that. It's like just buy multiple and it's small still, frames. It, you don't think it's worth it, so then once you just pay that, you can show everyone all your cards and display it somewhere? Put it in I your mean, living room. Who? Who well, is he going to brag to? It's certainly not going in the living room, but yeah, I guess you're not wrong about like dividing it by frames. Like this is literally, hey, want to come to my place? I have a whatever stamp collection. It's, who the fuck wants to see that? <laughs> no, one, no you <laughs> here's my cool. quarters from across the world. If I went to someone's house for the first time it. and I saw they had a bunch of rare Yu-Gi-Oh cards in a frame, I think it was pretty cool. You would. You found your intended audience, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just do it, do, it, do it to impress me. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you're going to invite someone over with the specific intention of showing them your stamp collection. It's not like an advertising feature. But there's no point. If, if you don't, if you enjoy it, you may as well put it in your living room. Who cares? Yeah, really. You're going to be the one spending most of the time there, not the fucking person you're inviting you, over. You think you're going to invite, Fuck. like, some friends over, and he'll be like, by the way, I brought three hot chicks, and they'll walk in and say, ew, Yu-Gi-Oh, and just leave? No. People go into your house, they're going to think it's cool. Yeah, they're going to get so fucking wet knowing that you spent over three grand on <laughs> yeah. little collectible cards. Yeah. Dude, you know, <laughs> bitches love men like Chris Chan. Drops all the panties. We should collect cool things like beer. Old no, beer. Nah, that's you also not beer. cool. <laughs> no, that's that's <laughs> kind of also guess. impossible with how many craft brews there are. Uh, that's the beauty of it. And this yeah. is the beauty of hate beer. The beauty of an ad break. I like okay. that. All right. Yeah, beer sucks, though. I totally agree. You'd need to yeah. have a whole warehouse to store all of the beer. Mm-hmm. What do you okay, that's a good question. What do you think is the coolest collectible people typically do? I'd say cars. Used panties. Oh yeah, cars is a good one. Like <laughs> used panties. Do you really think used panties? Uh, well <laughs> that is a pretty good one. I've never seen a collection they, of used panties, uh, but I imagine it could be pretty no, cool. No, I, I mean a traditional collection, like people display it and show it off and keep it nice. Are they used panties from conquests they've had? Like people they've <laughs> fucked yeah, or are they, they just, just steal them out of the trash? Without, <laughs> yeah, without them knowing. <laughs> Ordering from streamers. I don't know. I guess it'd have to be like a personal to personality to it, like yeah. I fucked her in 1945 or whatever and like fucking <laughs> put a stamp under it. Everyone's oh. got a story yeah, with her. It's, it's got her signature and a photo of her next to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah but that's not a very common one, I, I guess. But 
as an uncommon yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, like people who collect historical shit. Like, oh, this was Lincoln's hat or something. That's cool. Oh, that's a cool, cool one These were Lincoln's too. panties. That's a really cool <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. yeah bath when water. you when you see those old people where they just have a whole room of Civil War memorabilia and shit, that's really cool. I wonder if there's anyone who does that, but with the internet age, if anybody has started a collection like that, not because they like it. Let's say they might have Belle Delphine's ass water in the collection, but it's just for the sake of completeness because she's just, you know, a part of internet history now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. There's probably someone somewhere doing internet history collection. I wonder what kind of shit like he'd be collecting, like a Ray William Johnson t-shirt signed with the equal three shit, all the old stuff. Yeah. Oh, Pewdie yeah. PewDiePie like shirt. U2's figures. Jacksepticeye concert tickets, PewDiePie, I don't know, meet and greet, something. That's, that's what I was thinking. Maybe we should make a collectible... Like trading card game based off YouTube personalities. That wouldn't work though. You YouTube's already has that, and it's better because it's an actual figurine that you display, whereas cards end up exactly how they do for me, just in a fucking binder. Yeah, no, but, but he's saying, kids can battle yeah. battle with them at yeah, school. Yeah, he's talking about an something. actual game that you oh, play. Oh, you mean like competitive game? Yeah. Sure. I don't yeah. Know. It it definitely work. The more subscribers, mm -hmm. the stronger the card is. Jackson's <laughs> just saying we make a card battle game, but the theme is YouTubers. Instead of traps, you have like drama, <laughs> and that's how they how you lose Ooh. shit. Oh, I like that. Yeah, oh, that's pretty yeah, sus. That's cute. That's scandal cool. cards. Yeah. yeah, a scandal zone. Instead of monsters, you have YouTubers. Instead of spells, you have videos or streams. I like that. <laughs> that different would different have to more be popular more like... games bring in more viewers. I'm sure there's a Monopoly YouTuber game at this point, right? Oh yeah, there's there's a handful yeah. of like YouTube based games that people. Is it come. realistic? Like, go to the forest, film a corpse, make a crying apology video, all the usual <laughs> YouTuber shit. Collect two hundred pass go. Yeah. yeah. Collect two hundred sympathy instead of money. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of likes. Ooh, the person with the most likes wins. Instead of Exodia, you could like yeah, assemble. You could assemble a bunch of basic bitch PC YouTubers, and if you get all five parts, you get Susan Vakovich, the CEO, and she just destroys <laughs> the whole field. <laughs> yeah, she she announces She's like Exodia. She announces permanent monetization for your family friendly channel, <laughs> or demonetization for your enemies. She's the fucking blue oh, eyed yeah. bitch demonetization. Dragon. No, yeah. <laughs> Susan Vakovich is the Exodia of the game, but when you summon her, everyone loses. <laughs> oh that asshole yeah god fuck youtube F fuck them so hard i don't think a competitive card game is going to be the right collectible avenue i think we need something different it needs to be something like to put on display that's the new thing everything's displayable i mean that's why you're building lego star wars anyway like <laughs> it needs to be something that you can display hmm what are you laughing at? I agree with that. It needs to be displayable. So then, what you would you? That display factor. What would you craft around real people that would people would want to display? Well, you two just sex with dolls. So we need yeah. to do something different, right. something like radically different. Mm. Rings. Mm. Uh. See, but I I feel like. Are you sure that U2s is really that successful? I mean, aren't they just Funko Pops and people hate those? What are you talking about? I don't it's think people massive. hate Funko Pops. Yeah, and Funko Pops are yeah. like the most collected thing like ever. Yeah. People have whole rooms and warehouses That's full fair. of Funko I'm, Pops. I'm listening to bias on that one where just I feel everyone like, I've heard says they hate it. I feel like those kind of franchises just make the money off of the whales. It's just a few people who obsessively piss away their money buying all of them Funko Pops. Like if there's a new TV show and it, you know, 20 seconds later there's a Funko Pop figure. They gotta get it. Do you, do you think that with how ubiquitous Funko Pops are, there's is it even possible to collect every single one in that? I'm sure some people have. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'd be very impressed because think how many they are. They crank out like what five new ones a day or some shit. Yeah, that that, that seems like an impossible task to keep up with that. Like you, you would run out of room. You'd need a fucking storage facility to hold all of them. Yeah, well, you know, some rich And fucker even then, they have the limited edition ones where it's like, hey, if you go to Comic-Con, that's the only place you can buy this one. You know what I mean? Yeah, or, or on eBay the next day. Yeah. I wonder. 
yeah, I don't think we're good with this. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to nail collectibles. I just keep thinking of things, and what I was coming back to was like a Voltron, but that's never going to work. Yeah. What do you mean a Voltron? Like you connect YouTubers to like a central piece, and it's like a never, you can never complete it. You just keep adding more YouTubers to this like one giant mech, which is a fucking horrible idea. That sounds so creepy. Yeah. Yeah, you just make it a human centipede. Exactly, yeah. it's a dumb idea. But yeah, let's just sell like little fingers weirdo. on all fours, sucking ass that you can attach to one another. The biggest centipede. <laughs> Who's got the biggest centipede? It's very emblematic of YouTube, YouTube too. I mean, it's chain. just a bunch of shit eaters sucking each other's farts. So fucking perfect. That's kind of a cute idea, though. Like, if you just had a, like a never-ending human centipede line of uh, collectibles, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you lock them together by shoving the noses up the assholes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Each chain. That, that is cool. <laughs> Trademarked official podcast in case anyone's anyone from Bandai Namco is listening. Right now, someone just threw their hands in the air. Fuck, that was my idea. Isn't Toys R Us back? That. I read that Toys R Us is back from bankruptcy with one store, I think, someplace in the US. Here's your idea, Toys R Us, work with us. Let's get into a partnership. We can bring you back from the brink of failure with all you you're missing is human centipede yeah <laughs> <laughs> would they you have like a degenerate market would they have like adjusted cutesy names like human centi pewdiepie or something like that <laughs> wow apparently the new yeah. the new toys r us stores are much smaller and they're focused on digital toys that's silly the fuck are digital toys you mean video games uh like little uh well first of all funko pops but second of all, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, they have Lego. Ooh. But, but how are these digital toys? No, I'm saying they also, you can buy like tablets and shit. And they have like tablets throughout the store so you can like look where toys are and, and shit. Little interactive experiences. Hmm. But apparently why. the Toys R Us stores, this is fucking fascinating. The Toys R Us stores are much, much smaller. And uh, it's really just kind of a big brand seller. Like they have Lego, Nerf. Barbie. That's about it. The, the official centipede. Well, no, yeah, they, Toys R Us used to be massive, like, warehouses of just different toys. Yeah. That was the whole thing. Only, yeah, like, huge. very big brands, though. I don't remember them having anything, like, obscure. I, 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 I don't know. How frequently did you go to Toys R Us? Yeah, I think you're misremembering Toys R Us. When I was they a used kid, to be I went gigantic. The they kind of had everything. Yeah, it was, like, there. 20 years ago, Charlie. It was, like, the Walmart for toys. That's not true. I... I went to Toys R Us like four years ago to buy a Ouija board. But you weren't a kid then. Yeah, and that was four years ago when they were starting to fail. Uh, fair. Yeah. But now apparently they're they're kind of like GameStop, uh, GameStop, except for big brand toys. <laughs> slated to fail. Cute. Speaking well, of slated it. to <laughs> fail. I don't uh, know. How else are you going to have a brick and mortar toy store in this day and age? That I think that's really the only thing they could do. That's what I'm saying. It's later to fail. Funko How the fuck? And I, I feel like every brick and mortar store yeah. eventually is gonna just go to shit. Why wouldn't they just yeah. make a website? I, I look forward to that day. I look forward to that fucking day, man. When all the brick and mortar stores are replaced by like services and foods and goods. That do well, not goods. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but just think about it. All that extra land, just actually putting more things together, more no. opportunities. Yeah, yeah but you still need to store the crap. What do you mean? Well, I that's think where you put it in to... warehouses away from wherever. Yeah, but eventually there's going to be real land need, all of a sudden. We're going to need so many warehouses that all those stores are going to become warehouses. They're just going to ship the shit to you from there. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I'm just thinking, I think it's dying. I think it'd be nice if you go to a mall. I mean, malls are dying too, but you go to a mall and everything is just like. You know, services, food, instead what, of... What, what services, though? I don't know, like a spa, a haircut place, fucking mm. shit you would go and just be like, ooh, that'd be fun. I could use a haircut. Don't they already have all that kind of stuff? They do, but you have to walk miles and miles of infrastructure to get there because it's like, hey, pass by GameStop, pass by fucking Yankee Candle, shit that you can just buy online. This is the most American shit I've ever heard. Like, I want my spas <laughs> right next to me within walking distance. Yeah. Everything within walking distance. Make it convenient, what's convenient damn it. to me as in my immediate vicinity. 
I don't care who's, who's uh, stores have to go on to f- for that to happen. <laughs> I want bankruptcy for every single product just so I don't have to walk. I don't know. It's a bit of a scary what idea. What are you going to say, Kyle? I don't remember. It's probably just going to oh, yeah, be all monopolized day, by Amazon. Idea. I think that's going to be a big problem. The way it should be. <laughs> At least they I don't get know, it I think done, man. That definitely is the future, though, in my opinion, is brick and mortar shit is going to go away. And I, you know what? I, I feel the same way about shit like Google Stadia. I think that is the future of gaming. That's the eventuality that's going to be unavoidable yeah. at some point. Just We're like, just not there yet. Yeah, you know, fucking, I don't know how many years ago we all made fun of Netflix. We thought, why would you ever do that? The internet is slow. You can't even own it. Why? Who would want that? And now, you know, Blockbuster is out of business. Yep. And I think fucking that's how it's going to go. Blockbuster had, uh, had the opportunity to buy Netflix in its infancy and turned it down. Because they thought it was unviable. That's a real story. And also a real ad break. Right now. That sounds about right. And we're back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, who knows where it'll evolve. I mean, look at at virtual reality. Back in the fucking 90s, you had the virtual boy. That big red brick you would strap to your face with a shitty controller. To like simulate some level of 2D depth. Mm-hmm. Now uh now we have fucking the index and the Oculus and the Vive and they're fucking great. Like they still they still have limitations. They still have wires that get annoying and you need a graphics card for them and you gotta plug them in and all that shit. But it's certainly a fucking actual virtual reality experience compared to what we used to have. It only took 30 years. <laughs> well yeah. <laughs> but hey, it took 30 years, but it's here. Yeah, 30 years from now. I think it's Stadia is going to be probably the one and only platform. Stadia probably. will never work. The Why? big problem we have right now with all that shit is we got to radically reform our internet laws before that shit's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Okay, communist. I mean, uh, Ameri- <laughs> uh, American fucking internet, internet infrastructure is built on our ideas from like 1998. It's like we we really got to rewrite a bunch of the laws. We like need to reseize the means of internet production. Yeah, <laughs> we got to bring in a we got to bring an equal distribution. Everyone is equal with internet, no matter how much work they do. It'll work perfectly. Yeah, but our fucking internet laws are a joke. We got to really just rewrite almost all of them because they were yeah, written. Yeah, but what's wrong with them, the Andrew? Internet. How would you fix it? Well, one is that ISPs have way too much power. The way that they divide it up for exclusivity clauses, you sometimes, based on where you live, are forced to have one internet service provider. And if they don't care about you, you're completely fucked. You will have slow speed no matter what you do. Whereas instead, if they got rid of those exclusivity contracts, you could have multiple ISPs competition. Also, the uh, way that the ground cable is laid out, like the way the actual wires in the ground that give you your internet, is also part of those contracts. <laughs> So if, uh, say, Comcast is like, yeah, I don't feel like fixing the wire in your ground and it starts going bad, your internet will just be fucky and there's nothing they can do about it or you can do about it. Mm. Yeah. Also, uh, good old Copa was written in like 1996 or something or 2003, some early fucking year. That's just one example of a whole bunch of laws and protections that were written back when we had no fucking idea what to do about the internet. I'm curious on your guys' opinion do you give a fuck about personalized targeted ads where they're collecting your data for ads that suit you? Uh, no, I don't care about that. Yeah. I'm just using that as an example, by the way. I'm not trying to defend Copa. Oh, I, I know. I'm just curious, though, because uh, like everyone makes a big stink. Like, my God, they're collecting my data so I get an ad that I actually might care about. This is fucking horrible. Oh, yeah. People who people who are paranoid about living in the botnet are fucking idiots because you're not a fucking person to them. You're a statistic. That's the same shit the government does. Who cares? That's Let such a happen. retarded argument. By that same logic, you could say then that's, you know what, the government should be able to spy on everyone. You're not a person to them. Who cares what, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong in private, why shouldn't they have all your data? It's called privacy. I want my privacy. Because it's not, it's data it has they nothing to do have. with. Who are you talking about? They right already now? know your age and your sex and your. Are we still talking about personalized ads? I'm a little lost. To be honest. Well, yeah, so I'm just saying why. Same. Okay, so they can know my age and such, but that doesn't mean they need to know everything. They don't need to know my porn browsing history, or my Amazon purchase history, or any of it. 
I don't want don't companies know. to know. I don't, I don't want the government to know. It's none of their business. I don't like it when I look at my phone and my phone knows without me entering where my home is. That's the creepiest shit to me. Like I look at the map and it says you're close to home. How the fuck do you know where my home is? Well, that's because you're... It's convenient. Your that's GPS. the future. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. Google Stadia. <laughs> Presented by Google Stadia. <laughs> I just turn all that stuff uh, uh, off when I can. So the only downside to that is, Charlie, here in Europe, we have much stricter laws about like cookies and shits. That's why if you're in Europe, every website will like give you five notifications that you first have to click away to give them consent to use cookies and collect your data. So if I try to use, mm. if I try to read a news article, it first says this website utilizes cookies to personalize your yada yada. Would you like to? It like lets you turn on and off which cookies you'd like to enable or consent to. It's kind of too much at some points. Yeah, that can get annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Know. But if why I, do you ask, Charlie? Do you do you like targeted ads? No, I don't really care, to be honest. Uh, no matter what ad I get, it doesn't really influence what I'm going to, to buy yeah. or something. But, like, if I had a kid and my kid's getting, like, you know, my kid's super into Nerf or something and he's getting Nerf ads, I don't think it's going to be the worst thing in the world that they collected data on my son to know he likes Nerf. I don't, I don't think I'd give that much of a fuck. It's the precedent that... Yeah, it's the, I get the precedent, that. but the thing is videos. It, the only thing they collected on was video data. Like, I, I don't see the huge deal about, you know, my God, they know what my son's watching and what he likes for videos. I don't see that as a huge issue. But now if they're watching my son, you know, go to school or some shit and figuring out his tendencies in class, like, hey, it seems you've got a stutter. Here's Mavis Beacon's typing class or something. Yeah, but then that's a little different. Yeah, it is a little different. And that's why we have to draw these lines. I mean, it's a far fetch from... Yeah, I got an ad for Nerf darts to, hey, it turns out Alexa records literally everything I say, even when it's not supposed to be recording and actual human beings can listen to these recordings, not just an algorithm, yeah, not just a machine. Yeah, some that, some I mean, fucker at okay. Amazon can listen in if he, if he feels like it. That's my problem. I don't yeah, want that. That's not okay. The that's only, very different. That's the only not thing what I was, I was saying, saying yeah. yeah, and the only thing I was saying on it earlier is I don't mind the data that's like readily available being passed around, like how old you are where you know your hobbies like the shit that they're going to find out no matter what just because you use those services for those things like you google what you're doing or this and that but no directly spying on you i'm not okay with that is directly spying on you it's you know spying has a it's a spectrum of definitions but if you say i don't mind you know who cares if they know everything about me dude it's creepy i don't know if you've ever tried downloading your data from any of these social media sites and they just have this uh a lot of information on you that you didn't give them and you don't even know where some of that shit comes from that you yourself might not even realize that you liked for example it's it's fucking creepy i don't want that because you know the companies aren't going to draw this line for you to them it's all the same to them knowing your age and knowing that your wife is pregnant is the same thing yeah, but do they ever really even do people ever comb that data? Don't they just feed it into machines to algorithm through it? I do look at the news almost every single month. Some social media company has to apologize for a bug in our system that let third party contractors access your Alexa recordings or some such of that nature. It, they're mm. not good with their data. First of all, Two, do you really want so you're getting spit roasted from both sides here. Remember, the government wants to fuck you. The companies want to fuck you. Do you want them to have an alliance? Remember what happens when the government tried to <laughs> hack some guy's Apple phone and it, it turned into this yeah. huge hoopla about do we have a right to not have our phones hacked by the government? The government can come and in Apple at any actually moment. Apple stood up for us, right? Huh? Steve Jobs Apple rose from the grave yes. to defend us. <laughs> Well, Tim Cook, yeah. Tim Cook said no, right? You're not allowed to. Yeah, because uh, you know it would have set a terrible president and made them look terrible. And that's just not mm. what you want. You don't want the government to be able to say go to Gmail, uh, to Google Mail and say, "Hey, you know this guy Andrew, we've been watching him, all this other data on him, kind of suspicious. Show us his emails." You don't want that. That's really bad. But targeted ads, are they good or bad? They're good for business. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't get. Uh, yeah, they're good for business, but I don't see how they would even be good for the person who's getting the ads. I mean, I, if I want to buy something, I already know what I want to buy. 
If I have yeah, to see an ad for it, I feel it's a that's, useless thing. That's a good question on ads. When was the last time an ad actually like swayed you to buy something instead of, oh, you know, I've been thinking of getting that or never oh, once in my life ever. Yeah. Not a ads single to time. me are always, oh, I have that. Maybe I'll get a better one or, oh, I need a new one of that. That's a good place to get it. Never like, oh, this has convinced me out of the blue to get this. You know what I mean? I think I just filter out ads. I can't remember the last ad I directly <laughs> like engaged with. Maybe I have like a permanent ad block in my brain. Well, how about this, Jackson? Message yeah. from our sponsors. Insert here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great you know ad. What it, I'll remember it you entirely. Know, what is getting egregious about ads, though, and these are ads that I specifically <laughs> do remember, and it frustrates me because I pay to see these ads, is the ads at fucking cinemas. What is the deal? Oh with my that? god, oh, they're man. getting longer, right? Whoever came up with this, like, whoever greenlit this shit, I, I assume at some point down the line, somebody had to sign off on being able to show so many advertising. Find that guy, shoot him in the back of the head, assassinate him, kill him. He deserves I went, it. I, I went to the midnight screening of. Star Wars, obviously. And no kidding, there were 45 minutes of ads. The movie didn't start until 12.45. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> it's on average 21 minutes. Yeah. I go every week and it's usually around 21 minutes worth of ads. Absolutely. Charlie and I will go to the movies. It's already midnight. I want to go to bed. Here in Germany, show me the fucking movie when Charlie that I and I go to the movies together, we don't even bother trying to be on time anymore because we know we just have 21 minutes before the movie actually starts. So that's the it's fucked so up part, consistent. though, right? Add up, add up, you know, add. You know, it's so many ads and you think that, you know what, I'm not going to be late. I, I, I'm fine. But then you're kind of the asshole when you have to shuffle past everyone who's already seated and you yeah. kind of feel bad. You feel like the douchebag, even though you haven't really done anything to deserve it. And to Two, what they I don't know if they do it the same way in America, but in Germany, what they do, the scum fucks, is that they randomly during some showings, they just don't show the ads. Like, I don't know, maybe one out of five screenings doesn't have advertising. So it's always a gamble of, OK, do I take that chance? Oh, that's I don't want to be fucked. half an hour late to the. Yeah, it is so fucking fucked. Jesus Christ. It's downright evil. Fuck you. We're pay We're literally paying a, like a fee of what? You could uh, get a Netflix subscription for like two months or something for the price of a ticket these days. And you're still shoving ads down my throat. Unbelievable. You're paying the exorbitant it's price disgusting. of seeing the movie when it's new and they have the audacity to cram all this fucking they're junk into it. They're not even targeted it. ads. I've got to watch ads about a fucking retirement village or a dentist. Uh, well, I don't that's, fucking wait, care. Just wait, to be fair, that's your, that's your theater's local ads. The ads usually are targeted. Movies play trailers for similar movies. Yeah, wait, what that are you talking about? Oh, wait, what do you well, get when you, when you go to the I'm, movies? <laughs> are you guys just talking about trailers for movies? Because I'm fine with that. Wait, what, no, I'm what not the fine fuck with that do you either. get? How early do you go to the movies that you're watching the stuff they play in between the movies? In between? No, what are you talking no, about? No, no, Jackson is right here. What are you play? talking about? I'm talking about ads for products. Yeah, like regular cars ads. And, and... Yes. We, we don't get that. You, we don't get that. You don't get that? Jesus, I'm talking about 45 minutes of that. Yeah. Wow, you're You didn't know up. this? Wait. Yeah, that, that is what we get. It's ads for, like, beer and shit. Yeah. What? So it's like so before your movie shit. or like before, before the movie, here, before the yeah. movie. OK, we, here before before our movie, no, we no, have no, a no, thing so that's on. like based on the theater. It's like, thank you for coming to stars. We're going to no. show you an interview with Tom Hanks. And then we're going to talk about this new early. They have the early look where they'll do like yeah. like local ads no. like here's this dentist and he fucking fucks. Yeah, no. but that's not yeah, that's not like during like the movie trailer ads. Once the movie trailers start, they're back to back to back, and then the movie starts. All right, listen, listen. So the, the ticket time, the time that they advertise on the, on the ticket, is the time the ads start. So you yes. go in, and then you get about like thirty minutes of ads from just companies around Australia, like beer companies, wow. car companies, local dentists, all that kind of shit. It's just like if you were to watch like television, those kinds of ads. You know, the the thirty second clips of ads. It's just that over and over and over again until you get to the movie trailers, which is about ten minutes of the most recent movie trailers, and then the movie starts. Oh, you're lucky That's, with ten minutes though. The trailers yeah. for us, it's like what twenty five well, minutes. I'd much rather. Well, I would trailers. prefer that. Yeah. yeah, I would much prefer that yeah. over the fucking 45 minutes from on Star Wars of just constant, like, 
It was the same ad three times as well. I counted the same fucking Telstra ad three times. That's unforgivable. I had no idea. Jesus you guys Christ. actually get normal it's, ads. It's, yeah. It's a it's a monopoly over here. Yes. Event cinemas. If you're listening, fuck you. You try fuck cunts. all of them. I they don't charge like thirty thirty dollars, and then they 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 put on the same ad three times in forty five minutes. You fuckwits. It's midnight. Just show me the movie. Yeah. It's fucking Holy evil. Fuck. I'm serious. That person, whoever came up with this shit, needs to be dragged out in front of his family and beaten to death while, while they watch. Like, just to set a precedent, just to make an <clears> example <throat> out of him to all the other cinema people you round him up to. You put him in front of the crowd so they can watch and you decapitate him ISIS style. Motherfuckers. How dare you? I paid good money and I'm getting a TV experience, basically. Mm -hmm. And they're all mm -hmm. so loud, too. It's just the, the blaring the fucking. Uh, advertising into your ear it just makes me hate the company if anything that does this yeah and the so theater. fucked i had no idea there's there's a whole there's a whole industry over here they, they're called val morgan pre-show they specialize in selling ads to cinemas before the movie starts <laughs> what a shit corporation then, oh my god and then and then they advertise their shitty company in the ad section of, the, <laughs> of that cinema. So you know who to blame. Is, that's nice, at least. So you know who to go for if you want to advertise your fucking business. They kill those people. Ugh. What, what a bunch of cocksuckers. As oh, if man, buying what? overpriced popcorn and fucking Coke and beer wasn't enough. I have to... So that's another thing, right? So you Jackson, buy your popcorn, you sit there, and it gets all soggy. Your, yeah. your Coke gets watery. During the fucking ads. The ads aren't even over yet. The movie hasn't even started, and my... The cola is tepid. All the fucking fizzes out of it gone. I'm basically done with my popcorn. Great. I'm f I'm fine with them overcharging for concession food and such since they don't make as much money off tickets. Like the profit margin on tickets isn't massive since they give most of the money back to the studios. But you don't double dip and then spend 45 minutes showing you fucking ads cunts. You know so what's Jackson, really... When you just do one or the other. I was, I was going to say, when you came to the States, we saw two movies together as like a group. Was that wildly different than how it is in Australia? Because you didn't point that out. I don't, honestly, we got there right as the movie started, right? We didn't see any Pretty ads. close to it. Yeah. Yeah, it was different. Well, yeah, I, th I just assumed, I just assumed we were late. Yeah. We had a little, <laughs> we, we got like a little quiz or some shits, but I don't remember advertising per se. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we had the, uh, the app the the mobile app racer game i don't yeah. remember that what what's that i don't remember yeah, what's that we, that was one of the ads that we got because yeah. I, I know kai and i saw that one when we went to see one of, I don't you remember guys what saw movie. the meg i believe right that might have been it yeah that one was fun it's worth it because uh, we get we get those ads before like way before the movie starts mm. I'm sure it depends on the ad, like the uh, the cinema. Like I'm sure a lot of smaller cinemas don't overload with ads. Maybe not. They do. They do. The, it's it's mostly because this company over here, this theater, is like the only theater over here now. Event cinema. They're just massive, so they've got a monopoly on the market. You know, it's so really fucked literally up. Do whatever they want. Jackson is that company but, you mentioned that sells those ads to the cinemas. So you go. Yeah. You know that that company made millions of dollars putting advertising in front of uh, The Return of the Jedi, whatever the fuck screening, right? The Prime yeah. movie that just came out, 45-minute ad slot, they made millions off of your torture. Mm -hmm. That's why I really want yeah. to kill these people. Fucking douchebags. It's disrespectful to your customers to do that. Mm. God, Jesus. That's an eye-opener. I had no idea. They, they may as well get just fucking bare bones with it have it little, little screen come up and say this movie's brought to you by colgate oh, so that's what they do in turkey is um really <laughs> do, do you got well not in the they cinema have a colgate representative there in the cinema to answer all your questions if you have any He's yeah the there's front. a colgate attendant standing in the corner of the theater with a little clipboard during the movie <laughs> No, actually, to be honest, the cinema experience in Turkey is not too bad. It's actually better than in Germany, because in Germany, it's really difficult to find a movie that hasn't been dubbed. So it's always a shitty German trend, uh, you know, voice acting, which it sucks if you want to see it in the original English, which you always can in Turkey. They just slap subtitles on them and you're good to go. But what they do on TV, I don't know when the last time you guys even watched TV or a movie on TV, they will, first of all, to fit in as much horse shit in between the advertising, they 
speed up the movie by like 10 percent it's still the same pitch yeah it's not 10 percent but like i I would guess judging from like the audio would be like five percent but i was what i got a glimpse caught a glimpse of the transporter playing at at one point uh, on tv and it was just weird goofy looking jason statham was like hurrying around like mr bean and i realized wow this is sped up (laughs) And this is how they're actually playing the movie. It has shitty Turkish voice acting where, you know, in Turkey, I don't know who the fuck they are, but we have, I think, like five voice actors in the entirety of Turkey. I don't know who they are, but they've been alive for like 40 years and they voice act all the movies. They put advertising on the lower third of the movie, a little banner that obscures the entire lower third. And then they also rotoscope advertising into the movie so if there's somebody oh, mopping the floor mopping the floor in the movie they will like have some advertising on the wall advertising for cleaning materials or some such shit and then obviously every 15 minutes you get a 10 minute ad break and this is how people <laughs> live and then they're surprised that netflix is a thing Jesus. that's nuts i had no you guys have it fucking rough over there i guess wow <laughs> yeah, I that's really the only just problem. waiting for cinemas <laughs> to start doing that. Uh, <laughs> I, I am really just waiting for like cinemas to start doing that, like to, uh, like ad intermissions or whatever. Like halfway through the movie, they take another ad break. I'm just yeah. waiting for cinemas oh. to die. By the way, yeah. I forgot. Don't yeah, forget, well, everything cinemas, is censored though. too. Yeah. So <laughs> all of the words in the translation, they get rid of the. Uh, bad translations and such. Like they translate something like "Go fuck yourselves" to go get yourself done <laughs> or so, something do of they, that nature do they censor uh do they censor things on religious grounds too like do they not show people drinking alcohol and shit yeah so if there's a scene yeah. of somebody drinking it's either cut or it's blurred out with like a mosaic yeah same with smoking any drug know, really um, bad words and uh, silhouettes even the silhouette of a naked woman gets censored <laughs> <laughs> i i know that um for similar reasons in india a lot of movies cut out scenes where they're drinking or they're smoking or if they leave it in they put a big giant disclaimer in the corner of the screen that says drinking is bad for you or smoking is bad no for that's you. not what they say <laughs> we saw we saw a gentleman which is a bollywood movie and a great bollywood movie but there's a club scene where it appears to be alcohol, but in the bottom right it says this is not real alcohol or something oh, like this that's with an X it, right, through right. it. Yeah, it, they put that little warning saying it's not real. And also at the very beginning of the movie, they show the slogans and a little guy goes like, smoking causes cancer, like just right before the movie starts. Fucking stupid. Uh, it's so cute. Is that actually an industry that you want to die, Charlie? Cinemas? Yeah. In their current form, yeah. There's no reason in 2019 that new movies should only be in the cinemas. You should have the option to watch them at home. You should be able to pay a premium subscription. Maybe probably an expensive subscription because they're new movies. But you should be able to do it like Netflix and then you just get every movie with cinemas. I kind of get the points that... I forget who made it. Some big Hollywood director said that movies that only play on net, uh, Netflix or that also play on Netflix shouldn't be eligible for Oscars. You guys remember that? I'm forgetting who it was. Yeah, I think I don't James remember Cameron? who it was either. I kind of get the point because obviously if you make a movie, you want it to be judged by in its best state in a good cinema where people pay to go see it. And, you know, they get the proper experience rather than somebody who's going to be watching it on his toilet on his phone in fucking on a mono down mix and then he's gonna go on twitter and tell people that the movie sucks so i kind of get that point but yeah i I feel like for the better good the common good would be just let us stream it on our computers you can can still have that same thing you can have someone go to a shitty theater and say the speakers aren't working right but they don't know that they're broken so they're like wow this movie sounds like shit yeah same thing uh, yeah i don't know it's not really something I've yeah. really thought about much. I don't know where that went, if they're now eligible or not. Uh, the chat is telling us they it's are, Spielberg. They? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, yeah. Well, Spielberg's also a very traditional director. His movies are very, like, big theatrical things. Designed for cinema. Exactly. Designed to be watched in a movie theater. Not a home movie. Yeah, but then again, it's they would have to take such a gigantic pay cut because 
now you know if it's just gonna air on netflix then why the fuck should anybody pay 50 bucks to see it in a theater with everything included like popcorn and shit for yourself and your partner yeah, I pr- but yeah, convincing the general audience too might be difficult. But I would much prefer to see something like Jurassic Park in a cinema. I don't as know. Opposed to it, it should just be an option. The, uh, though. I don't think it should be like a uh, force to do that. So here's yeah, a great idea. Why don't? F- here's a great idea, though. Why don't the film fucking studios themselves just do this? Why doesn't like say Universal Studios go? Hey, we're introducing Universal at Home, and all of our movies when they get out in the theaters, you can stream them for this much money. Why not? Well, they, again, they're going to give you a lot of reasons, and then they cut out the middleman of cu- of getting paid by the theaters. Uh, they don't want to cut out the middleman, Andrew. It's that's a lot of money for them to sell tickets. Like I said, if why should they not want fifty bucks uh, to make fifty bucks off of every person who wants to see the damn movie? And don't forget the advertising that they shove down our asses and throats. Plus, you know, there's piracy concerns. So immediately they're going to tell you, well, you know, if you just put it on Netflix on day one, why the fuck should anyone ever see it in the movies? They could just watch it on Pirate Bay. Yeah, that's true. That would be my main, my main concern. What, um, uh, what was I going to say? I completely blanked then. Never mind. Well, you made a good point then, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. God damn it. <sighs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you know what? Just I don't immediately get... went... Uh, my, my main... Fuck! My brain! <laughs> I'm dying over here. <laughs> <laughs> so Is let's... there more you'd like to add to that, Jackson? Yeah, if there's nothing else... No, I want to stop talking for the rest of the episode. Have fun, guys. <laughs> if there's nothing else, I have a related topic that also pisses me off and it's related. Sure. So, uh, fuck Ticketmaster. How about that? Oh, yeah. Very related. Ticketmaster's very similar shit. I've been reading into this lately a little bit because I just got obsessed with things that are pissing me off. Ticketmaster, you know how they have, <laughs> I like, read those... read things uh, to getting mad. Yeah, man, every day you gotta find <laughs> something to fight on. Um, you know how Ticketmaster has those service fees when you buy your tickets for your, like, concert or your show? Mm-hmm. So Mm -hmm. everyone knows they're bullshit and they are bullshit. But I found out that recently the fucking CEO of the company was either on in a trial or like he got a bunch of claims and stuff. He himself said, yeah, a lot of these fees are indefensible. We have literally no way to defend the reason we put fees on these. We're we're just jacking prices for nothing. Did he actually go on record and say that? He actually said, and I quote, they're indefensible. He has no way to defend the fact that they just inflate Even ticket he's prices. he's disgusted by them. Yeah, he's upset. Yeah. <laughs> I this can't is outrageous. What do you mean I'm doing this? Oh, that's good. I'm making money. Who made this I choice? can't believe this shit is legal, yeah. though. They get a fucking virtual monopoly on ticket venues, and then they just start jacking up prices well, just because. Well, to be fair, they're not a monopoly. There's yes, other options. There's, there's Fandango. No. There's... No, the the amount of share, not only the amount of share Ticketmaster has completely eclipses all other companies. Ticketmaster owns exclusivity rights to like 200 big venues in the U.S. So mm-hmm. no matter what, you have to buy through Ticketmaster if you go to like the fucking Rose Bowl or Madison yeah. Square Garden or wherever the fuck Even they take over. They that. charge you extra for printing your ticket at home as yeah. well, don't they? Ticketmaster <laughs> is, a vir- is like Amazon. They're a virtual monopoly for concert tickets. So they can do whatever uh, the fuck they want. It pisses off some of the artists, too, because I see some of them on Twitter going, you know, well, nobody's (laughs) buying tickets to our concert because Ticketmaster just jacked up the price by like 500 bucks each. So this is fucking us. uh, We're not even getting the money. Fun fact, Pearl Jam was banned from touring in the 90s because they refused to sell through Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster's been around that long? Yeah. Ticketmaster started in the 80s. They started over the phone. They invented the ticket. The, they, they invented the <laughs> at-home ticket. They started over the phone in the 80s, and then they moved to the internet in the 90s. And Pearl Jam literally had to cancel their American tour because Ticketmaster banned them from their venues, and they own every big venue. That's crazy. Was a value loss? Yeah. Well, that ticket, for Pearl Jam lost literal millions from not being able oh. to tour in the U.S. Well, they could just put on their own shows. Yeah, at the fucking, like, what, garage down the street? Yeah. That can hold 12 <laughs> people? I mean, they're a big multi-million dollar ahead. rock band that needs a venue that holds tens of thousands. No, you just do shows over and over again at the same venue until yeah. all the people are Okay, satisfied. everyone, we finished our show. Can everyone please shuffle out so the next 30 people can watch? 
Yeah, treat it like a Disney ride. Do you know what'll happen then, Jackson? Is Ticketmaster will bribe the nearest politician and have some fucking regulation passed that doesn't allow any that venue. That's how monopolies work. Uh, does Ticket does Ticketmaster have that much power yeah. where they can bribe officials? Yes. Ticketmaster, anything related to live performances for big acts in America, you have to go through Ticketmaster pretty much. So they can literally tell the venue not to host you. They can jack up your ticket prices. They can fuck with you if they feel like it. It's fucked. So what's the solution? How do we beat the Ticketmaster? Uh, go back to letting value venues sell their tickets individually. The problem is that... Yeah, Charlie, you prick. Stop making them choose well, Ticketmaster. So the problem is that Ticketmaster started because back in the, like, 80s, lines for tickets were massive because you would go to a venue and it was like, oh, buy them at the mm. box office. But the line would be hours and hours long just to get your ticket for a show later that week. But Ticketmaster said, hey... We'll sell you the tickets over the phone or on the internet so you don't have to come even come to the venue and you'll have your ticket ready to go. But then they signed exclusivity deals. Hey, you have to buy your tickets through the internet. So the real big solution right now is let other people sell through not Ticketmaster, like Fandango or any of their competitors, but they're not allowed to. Yeah, but that's not something Charlie can do. Yeah, I'm asking what I personally oh, can do you to can beat do? the Ticketmaster. Oh, Ticket no, yeah. oh, pretty much nothing. You're pretty much fucked. <laughs> then I'll keep using Ticketmaster. <laughs> Your life's over, Charlie. It, uh, I've always liked Ticketmaster. You, know you like Ticketmaster? You've always liked them. Oh, I see no, what you're saying. I, I have no idea. I don't think I've ever used it. I've gone to one concert and it was with you to like a podunk stadium or a podunk bar in Ebor. Yeah, that was that was that was a, well, that was a uh, tickets were available at the door for that. But that was also a very small venue. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think I've ever bought anything through Ticketmaster. Yeah, that's the unfortunate side. So fuck you, Ticketmaster. It is a, it is a fucking joke that they they charge you. To print at home. How long? Yeah, they charge you for literally everything. How long until you have to buy your movie tickets through Ticketmaster just to see ads? <laughs> oh, baby, that's the end game. Yeah. Would you pay extra to go to a no ad screening? A hundred percent. Yes. Uh, like God, a no trailer so screening, you mean? Scummy. Yeah, maybe if you have like yeah. a premium cinema pass or something, you skip the ads, so you go into a exclusive theater with no ads that is a great idea yeah that's it's such not a great a, idea that they'll actually do that it's not it's not a good idea like, it's a sad idea it's like hey you I have know. to yeah you can buy the regular ticket or you can buy the extra vip ticket where we remove the spike from your seat okay well that's kind these of are, these are conversations these are conversations that they're actually having i can assume i bet i bet like there's a thing over here with cinemas, uh, well, the event cinemas called Gold Class, which is like the the exclusive cinemas, which are like, like the ticket price is double the amount, and you can b buy and uh, order like meals that they bring out to you in the cinema. It's like exclu it's like a smaller, uh, like better seating, less people in the cinema, so it's like a Gold Class experience. They they describe it as so. Uh, I do that a lot because I I, I don't know. That sounds nice. Like it. And yeah, it, it is nice. Do those and have ads? I figured, I, that's what I was about to say. I figured like you're paying a premium. There would be no ads during these screenings, surely. Like hmm. that's, it would just be dumb if they, if they still sell ads. Nope, still the same fucking 30 minutes of ads. Just this time they're for more slightly expensive brands of cars. Charlie. <laughs> you yeah, fucking um, pricks. That, he's reminding me, those, those nice like theaters where they give like dinner, the ones we have here, do they do the same shit? Like Alamo Draft House? Kind of. Uh, I don't know. And th those aren't very uncommon here, Jackson. Like, there's a, a theater right next to the University of South Florida called Studio Movie Grill. The tickets yeah. are pretty cheap there. Uh, the seating's not great. In fact, sometimes they just use actual office chairs in the back. But they still <laughs> have meal service. So no, Yeah, no. I... You guys have that a lot over there, I've noticed, like, still just regular cinemas with meal service. This is different. Okay. This is, like, less seating, like, more recliners, like, the full reclining, like, mm -hmm. luxurious seating or whatever. Almost every with, theater with here has recliners service. as well. 
Well, they're they're charging a premium for that over here. It's like an extra. Are you serious? Uh, double the double the price of your normal V Max. That's that, uh, cinema that's embarrassing. So your gold class is our studio movie grill office chair experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's luxurious chairs. Oh my god! What kind of office chairs are you talking about? Well, I'm it's just saying, like, the, the majority of the theaters that around this area are like very comfortable recliners and almost all of them do meal service to the chairs to the uh yeah well I, <laughs> we meal would service have to, to double the, the price. <laughs> and then the meals are super expensive on top of that because it's like concession bar price for the meals <laughs> i fucking like double what you I, i'm kind of shitting on it a little bit but i fucking love studio movie grill it, it's always available oh, yeah. seating because they they bring in office chairs so you got ample <laughs> space you're always going to find a place to sit, and the food's great. I love Studio Movie Grill. Yeah. You're just sitting on a bar stool. <laughs> <laughs> There's they, in the, one of the theaters I went to, like, they have, they have like, 30. One of the down th- downstairs theaters didn't have room for the office chairs, but they had, like, this little, like, stand-up cardboard, not cardboard, but, like, this little stand-up wooden area in the back that they just wheeled a few chairs to and sat people down at. So it was just, like, this little... Um, Almost like student desk in the back, like a row of students' desks. It was cool. (laughs) (laughs) All right, great. So, anything else? Uh, I think we can wrap. All right. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of The Official Podcast. Patreon.com slash The Official Podcast. If you want to listen to bonuses, we've got a bonus up right now. I assume right now. What did we talk about yesterday? Star, Star, Wars. Oh, yeah. Star Wars. We talked about cats and Star Wars. So if you want to hear our scathing opinions on both of those, we got a also if you bonus up oh on don't Patreon. give away the ending. Maybe we loved it. Maybe we talk about yeah, how great uh, it yeah. was. <laughs> also, if you skip any of our advertising, you're unpatriotic. It means you hate us. Don't do it. <laughs> Your local official podcast relies on you to buy the stuff. <laughs> All right. It, yeah, we don't we don't give you the ads before the show. We break the show up into segments. We we interrupt the show. And they're good. We're probably worse than the theaters. That's not true. At least the shit we talk about are things we actually use and are actually good. Yeah. yeah. And we don't sell fucking. We don't sell you thirty. You know, uh, these episodes aren't yeah. thirty free bucks show. a pop. <laughs> you know, they're free. Yeah. Our bonuses are ad free. Uh, if you and at least to. we start recording on time and it comes out on time. You don't have to <laughs> listen to the, like 30 minutes before you can listen to the podcast. Dude, imagine we do these shows live. Imagine if I like notified everyone, hey, show's starting. And then they sit here and I play them advertising for half an hour. How fucked. Oh That's genius. That, yeah, why aren't we doing that right now? <laughs> Quickly, the cram some ads in. We have time. Yeah, just the standby is ads. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're missing a golden opportunity here. On that note, we hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Amen, oh, yeah. everyone. Enjoy Doesn't this the song after Christmas. Yeah. We can put yeah. a song at the we, end there. We, enjoy, and we hope you had a Merry Christmas. There you go. Uh, I think it actually comes out on Christmas Day on after all the yeah. platforms. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we hope you had a Merry Christmas and a great uh, New Year. Thank you, yes. everyone. Thanks Bye-bye. for listening. Bye.